my background is in biology, actually, so I, that, uh, I won't go into these details. I'll just jump right in and, and, and mention this kind of publication that was uh, back in 2016 about a fair uh, guiding principle uh, for the management of scientific data. And as Emmy was mentioning, this, this is a set of, um, uh, it's an acronym, basically, uh, that outlines the kind of key things that you need to think about when you try to uh, release the data or at least handle the data that you're producing in your daily, daily life. And this has been endorsed by a number of people. You can see the list of authors it's, it's scanning, uh, people doing research, scientific uh, uh, publishing, funding agencies and partners. So really it was a, a cross section of all the players and and because they wanted to to raise this kind of alarm uh, call a uh, call of arm in a way for for improving the way things were done and why does it matter um so basically um the main the main purpose is to make sure that the data can be used by machines because this, owing to the production of data at such a scale now we need to be able to find data which means that um, the, the data set can be uniquely identified. They can be given a, uni, uh, a resolvable and stable identifier. This allows people to retrieve and connect data. Then what is really important um, in terms of discoverability is that you need to describe the data uh, with enough descriptors, the metadata basically. And these sets of descriptors need to be agreed by a community because we will be different. We have got domain of expertise and in order to make things understood by uh, that community, we need to agree on the kind of a, a, a common language. Uh, but we also need to think about how to access the data. And this means that, so fair doesn't mean uh, necessarily that everything is open and uh, freely available. It just tells you that you should provide information um, how, what are the conditions of access? Uh, if you don't want to access, you have to tell it, to tell people that, okay, you, there is an embargo, for instance. Then you need to use uh, terminologies, ideally. And, and again, we go back to this in a moment. Uh, this is simply to, to make sure that there is no ambiguity about when you tag a term, about what you actually meant with it. Uh, we need to provide detailed provenance information so that, again, uh, this allows people to understand what has been done and how the data was generated. Uh, and above all, you need to, to allow people to, to be clear, completely clear about what are the conditions of reuse. Uh, this is where the licensing issue come into play. And this allows you to make sure that your data set is reusable, or at least you describe what, under which condition these data sets are, are um, allowed for, for um, consumption. So in a way, this comes into the backdrop of uh, information between the gap between data generation and data availability. Just want to tell you about this AMI uh, program. This is a European uh, um, uh, initiative that brings uh, pharma industry and academic to produce, uh, to, to scan uh, and produce research data on a variety of projects. It's massive. It's been running since 2008, let's say. Uh, the investment is huge. You can see the number of publications. Um, but it, again, you have to, to think about this publication of scientific data that fell together in principle back in 2016. Uh, that was, in a way, a complaint, well, calling for data to be fair. And in 2019, there was a publication, again, by the EU, um, uh, trying to scan, understand what is the cost of not having data in a fair shape. Um, so I'll give you the links to these documents. But the take-home message is that in the red, in this pie here, in the red part, it is the cost of, um, in a way, on, on the expenditure of the data uh, not being managed. But on, on the other side is the missed opportunity. Like it's almost, it's, it's, it's like 150% of that, of that figure. So it's, it represents the missed opportunities of not making the data available. I mean, the lack of, of, of mining and things. And so this is the impact on innovation that you can have of uh, the absence of data, this kind of dark matter. We know the data is around, but we can't see it. And this is why the IMI decided to, put, to fund a project, which was called Fair Plus, to see, to understand what, or improve the processes of, of releasing data. So I'll try to go for an analogy of, uh, of cooking in a way, and I call it the empty fridge problem. Let's take the hypothetical situation where your country is about to go in lockdown and, and you, you want to cook something, but your fridge looks like this. And and of course you want to go to shops, uh, but the shops basically, you can't find them because there is no way to, to, to know where the shops are. And if you happen to find a store, you, you, when you look at the supplies, they look like this. And of course, then it's, it's, it's a big mess if you want to reuse anything to prepare your favorite meal, because you have no idea of what is being sold. So 
really the, 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 the notion of verification is to is to be, put labels on all these scans that we find and, and make them really meaningful so that basically applying a set of metadata is already interesting. You can have information about what is the content of the scan. And, and maybe there are things that you don't like to see in the scan. And so you don't want to, to buy it at all. And you've got composition, you've got volume, you've got the price, you've got a serial number, all these kind of things that allow you to make a decision whether you want to use or not uh, the particular element. So if you are lucky enough to, to, to have access to this delicacy, the spaghetti bolognese in a can, um, you, you, you're very pleased to, to have information about the metadata that you can have and it gives you a good insight into whether it's healthy or not at all and what kind of energy you get. And this is in a way on the label, but is it really what it says? Um, so sometimes it's good to have a certification and organization con to control what is in the can to ascertain that maybe, you know, it's organic really and it's not um, contain, it doesn't contain some GMO organisms if you don't want to eat them. Um, so really it's important to trust, but always check. And you may know that there was a scan a few years back um, that in some of these scans, even though they claim to, to be beef, they were actually, it was horse meat. And of course this is, this is not right. So it's about checking. It's about controlling. It's about asserting that things are okay. So in the context of data uh, science, this is really the backdrop of, uh, for the fair components was make, uh, you know, the, the kind of confidence crisis that we identified. I put a number of references here uh, just to let you know about the problems that we faced. Uh, but as machine learning co com comes into play, this is the importance of data readiness to make sure that the data that goes into these algorithms is of good quality, so good training uh, can occur. And the data that is published is, is of, is, 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 can be really um, mined effectively by scientists. So um, there are two aspects of turning fair into reality. It's really to make sure that we have the tools, the infrastructures, the services, uh, that we train people to get familiar with those uh, tools, but also that we, we have um, the standards. You know, I was mentioning kind of what kind of metadata or descriptors you can have in the CAN. Uh, this is what we call standards as well. And this is really um, a matter of social and, and technical agreement. We need to, to connect and agree on the on conversion. And this is, this is hard, but I guess it's, it's really not a, no longer an option. We have to do it. So there are tools and resources to help you in, in surveying the different domains. You, you, we op you, you may have different background and you may operate in very different field, but still there are three things that you will be uh, dealing with for data formats, data structures, terminologies, and then guidelines and identifiers. These are I'm just showing a few examples in the world of standard developing organizations, such as the LCL7, ISO, W3C, CDISC in the clinical domain, for instance, um, but also grassroots standards uh, like the Genomic Standard Consortium Alliance, uh, the, the UPO PSI, the Triple Bull Alliance for Genomic and Health. And in order to help you navigate that sea of standards, you can uh, point go to fairsharing.org that will give you an overview a relation between standards, database, and policies uh, that will help somehow uh, navigate the sea of standards and, and make sure that for your domain, you can find the relevant resources that are meaningful for you to establish a data management plan. So, and of course, I mentioned evaluation. Um, so there are tools that are being developed, such as the FAIR evaluator that allows you to um, uh, give it an identifier uh, to the service and it will run a set of questions or a set of, of, of checks and give you a report. Uh, this is in development, of course, this is still early days, uh, but this is also to indicate that the kind of, of uh, framework and infrastructure they do exist um, um, to, to, do, to do this kind of fair data. So I will finish really uh, with two slides. I hope I didn't overshoot too much, but it, let's, let's take an example of treating that presentation as a data set. Um, so, uh, the key thing is that where could you do this? What could you use as a service to just, uh, uh, in a way, do a first step verification? You could just try to use Zenudo, which is the CERN um, uh, repository. So I could just upload, log in to this uh, website. I should have an ORCID ID, uh, which is a unique identifier for me. I, may, I hope you all have an ORCID ID that will help uh, in the process. The first thing I could do is to stick uh, the file of this presentation in, in the Zenudo by uploading it. Then um, I need to decide what kind of data set it is, what kind of, whether it's a presentation or a pure data set. So you can, uh, a bit of choice. Then moving on, I can provide some data, metadata, publication, a title, basically. But also you can see already, I can list my authors and it's integrated with ORCID already. So this is why I was mentioning it's quite cool to have an ORCID. It's a persistent identity, resolvable identifier for your identity and connects resource. 
And you can reserve a DOI, which will be a unique identifier, again, reservable for, your, uh, for the metadata about your data set. Moving on, you can uh, go back to the, uh, the term of access. So you can be accessibility, you can describe it. And again, I insist it doesn't mean to be, uh, to, to have fair data doesn't mean they have to be open. You can set an embargo and the tool that I'm showing you allows you just to do that. You have to select a license. That's I think important uh, we, because this is about reuse and it to be unambiguous about that. And finally, um, I wanted to show you that the tool allows you to connect to your funding sources. It's always good to acknowledge the funding agencies um, uh, because they can also assess what you actually have produced. Uh, and it's also give visibility to all your work. So uh, you can do that with the UI, with the user interface that I just showed, but you can also do that uh, programmatically. I have the, the address to the FAIR cookbook uh, that we are developing under FAIR Plus, which allows you to, which gives you a description of how to do that with a Python script, uh, provided you have the, uh, the, the API token uh, keys to the service. And, and, and yes, this is, you can see in the message that is passed to the, uh, to the, by the tool, you will have um, the information about the ArcGIS ID, obviously uh, embedded. And um, I think that's, that's what I wanted to tell you about the Fair Data, I'll give you an example. I hope I didn't overshoot too much. Thank you for your attention.